Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So in today's video, we're going to go over ES Sakia uh, in her 5-star form, of course, and I'll do a little bit of gameplay and let you know what I think about her. But the most important question of all is, is she hot or not? Our demon princess is rocking it in that blue outfit. Yeah, she's hot. All right, so uh, Ia Sikia is the third iteration of Sikia, the other two being, of course, normal style as well as AS or another style. Um, and of course, being that she's ES, she has changed her ability from Fire Katana to Wind Bow. So her VC is one of two that can set Pierce Zone, and also it does come in with an AoE, uh, which is Wind Pierce AoE times two. Also stacks Ghost Hearts on users based on number of enemies, and um, so she needs to stack up to 5 stacks and she can convert into something called Adversity Mode which is reducing her max MP or HP but does a amount of damage a lot more than before. Also, note that she does inflict on a pain on all enemies at the start of battle if she's in the front line. And of course, she has the same abilities as AS4 where in Pierce Zone she increases damage by 15% per uh, attack up to 4 six stacks which is 60% for Pierce units. Note that her ES move is extremely powerful as well, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. So in terms of our three moves, we went with the Spirit Unburdened Embers, so um, you know, a much more powerful version of her normal style. So win, pierce, single target times three, and crit damage of all party members plus 45% for three turns. So if you've been playing around with the crit uh, damage increase, it really does help you put out a lot more damage. Now Hellbent is not bad at all as well. Self damage 30% and pierce resistance down and wind type resistance down 30%. When in any zone, well of course, you know, pierce zone of course, increase debuff effect to 45 on each. So that's an extra 90% damage. This was also very useful. However, if you have other units such as Claude Normal Style that can apply pierce resistance or other units that can apply wind resistance, then that one might be not as useful, which is why you're using the Unburdened Embers. In terms of her two AS moves, this is the one you'll probably be using to stack up those ghost hearts. Um, note that it is an AoE, powered down 25% for three turns. I don't believe that is 100% guaranteed, being that it, this is a hit. Note that also this attack does increase strength based on number of enemies and increases the number of stacked ghost hearts, like I said. And once it converts into five stacks, which is adversity mode, further increased damage against enemies. So again, very, very useful, has some power down, which is some support and utility, especially if you're up against enemies who do significant amounts of physical damage. And her spam move, which is the Spirit Parade, wind type uh, pierce attack AoE XL times three. And again, in adversity, increased damage. And in any zone, again, mostly pierce zone, but also in wind zone, for example, increased damage if target is inflicted with pain. If it is in pierce zone, it obviously does even more damage than that. And being that she is an automatic pain setter if she's in the front line, you can either have someone else set the zone, which is like, for example, AS Foreign, or uh, for example, AS Claude or AS Vena for wind. Um, you can play around with combinations or have someone else as a pain setter. So this is a five star board. And we'll just scroll up to the top to show the personality so you can share Grasta, Eastern Mask and Bow. And note that if you do have the boards of the other two versions uh, completed, they do give ES uh, Sakia some bonuses as well. So uh, one version gives power plus 10, and the other version gives speed plus 10. So it is in your best interest to have all three forms if you can manage it, or if you happen to have hit them along the way before getting ES Sakia. Now in terms of Grasta, Pain 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 is pretty much the way to go. And of course, if you can modify it with some of the future, uh, most recent Grasa, such as the Bullseye or Enemy Numbers, those kind of things, uh, it does enhance her damage further. So, let's take her out for a spin. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So obviously, since she is a Wind-type Pierce unit, um, she is very suited to take on enemies that are Earth-based, since Earth is weak to Wind. And just clearly like that, you know, she automatically sets pain when walking into them, and since she has pain grasa, enhanced damage right off the bat. So against most regular horror, she can certainly handle her own, although she doesn't have any self-heal modes, and so especially in adversity mode when she reduces her max MP, uh, HP, 
she can definitely be in a world of hurt if she does get attacked. But let's be honest, she's bringing the pain to them, she's doing tons of damage, and she's capable of significant amounts of damage. So as long as you are able to protect her, uh, you know, either through zones or other debuffs or shielding, she will do extremely well uh, for you. And if you haven't checked out my first fight against one of the newest uh, dual Hachio or dual Eastern Spirit Horrors, uh, One Wheel and Genkame, I definitely featured ES Tsukiya in that fight. So make sure you check that out on my channel. The video was put out, I believe, yesterday. Alright, so a couple of different examples against some older uh, super bosses that uh, you may or may not have already beaten, just to kind of demonstrate her versatility in the two different modes. So let's let her be a zone setter. So she's setting uh, Pierce zone, and in this case, she, since she does not set crit um, rate to 100, we're going to use AS4 as a crit rate setter. And there's a lot of synergy here with AS Seal, uh, using Expressive increasing bow damage by 50%, as well as obviously having a uh, clog with increased speed, uh, you know, crisp damage, and uh, pierce resist down, you know, so on and so forth. So you really want to have a lot of synergies in order to maximize the damage, uh, you know, on your units, especially if you have a top of the line uh, unit such as ES Sukiya. Most of the meta nowadays in terms of fighting is really pouring a lot of boosts or buffs onto one or two of your top tier DPS and really just supporting him or her while letting the others survive uh, you know, until you can get off that large AF. And especially if you're using, like, for example, um, you know, first turn or two turn Melissa strats, that's essentially what the, that's for. Melissa really does help with the first turn flash ray stance uh, to kind of set up everything, either debuffs or whatever, and then you can just end it or do tons of damage with your top tier DPS such as ES Sukiya. But in this case, watch this. Just like that, boom, 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 20 something million, instantly cleared into the next phase. So she does a lot of damage, and again, I will emphasize that we are using some more uh, future type of grass to dormant ore, which is the uh, bull's eye that really helps. Now, if you're wondering why the damage decreased so much, note that um, Seal actually acted after Iyasuki, and that's a little bit RNG wise. And so, if he had applied the um, type resist debuff with Vivachi, we might have actually gotten additional damage out of there. But in this case, still no problem. We hit uh, Molina for half the damage, and you know, one more round of the um, you know, AoE will finish it off from ES Sakia. Alright, so as usual, uh, just show you my loadout here. Again, uh, the purpose of most of these examples is not really to show absolute fully um, you know, optimized teams, more like to demonstrate some of the you know, basics that you can do with these units. And if you uh, find some ideas, um, you know, kind of brainstorm or even test things out, you can really get more out of your units uh, as much as possible. But in this case, it's easy to find some synergy with multiple bow users. We can even use mana as a grass to slave to share all those grass down. And just Leclerc's in the back just watching the show from afar. All right, so uh, first battle is over. Now let's go to something a little more recent. Um, this is one of the five artificial spirits, and uh, this one is earth-based. Again, very weak to wind. However, it is RNG-based, and so this battle is a little bit longer than I would have liked. Uh, if you wanted to end it faster, certainly something like a one-turn Melissa attack and then setting up for after the HP stopper would have ended the fight a little bit better. But we wanted to showcase some extra cool moves with um, ES Tsukiya. The whole point of this video is to try to build up that EX bar because uh, some of you may not have any EX units, uh, which is either Melina ES as well as Tsukiya ES. And so, uh, what the whole point is, those that secondary bar on the bottom there, the one that says uh, 2 in Roman numerals, that kind of light blue turquoise one, will build up as you get closer to a full bar AF. And the ES finisher um, is only active once you do get a full bar. If you have a half bar, which is a turn 1 or turn 2 AF, you will not be able to activate that ES super or EX super move. And the EX super move for each unit is a little bit different. I believe Sukiya's has a regen plus... Um, hold ground I think um, so yeah very very useful again in these are in more uh, longer fights and so you know it's only demonstrated here whereas if you're killing everything in two or three turns you probably don't even have a use for EX finishers however they look cool um, they do have some abilities especially if 
um, you know, your team's not nearly as powerful, or if there's just a longer battle with lots of HP stoppers, or just some RNG, for example, with um, this super boss where they keep us re-establishing Earth Zone, in which case things are a little bit tougher. Obviously, we have uh, AS Iske here with all equal applying the debuffs. We have Nakoko as a healer, crit rate setter, support. Um, I have another 5 star video of her, which is the other featured unit on this most recent battle, and she is a great support for uh, all elemental teams, in this case, Wind, but certainly in uh, her um, native um, color, which is Earth, as well as Wind, Water, or Fire. Alright, so we're getting close to the uh, full bar, and hopefully, the boss does not activate its own uh, change in uh, scenery or change in zone. Okay, so Wind Zone is still active. We have a full AF bar, and so let's just demonstrate the full power of a full AF bar in conjunction with uh, EX moves from ES Zakia. So notice that Rumen Normal is 9, and so we're just going to just use the AF bar as usual, do whatever multiple moves you're going to do in order to um, get that going. So each time that you hit with um, you know, your units, it kind of powers it up. And by the time you have a full bar, you'll easily get to the fully powered ES bar. And we'll just see what happens because we've already hit the hate half HP stopper. And we're just going to do some cool moves. Note that uh, AES Sakia is doing hundreds of millions of damage by herself. And at the end, she features her Phoenix form and s summons the power of wind and shoots a single super arrow uh, powered by a Phoenix all the way down to the ground to land and shred the enemy. And so that is an additional finisher up to 400 million. And note that we got a whole bunch of knives, which is actually pretty cool. Haven't done that before until this video as uh, you know. So anyways, that's how you use the EX move. And it's certainly more for show. However, it does have some abilities as well. Now keep in mind, we do already have um, Sukiya activated in adversity form, as you can see from the red uh, HP bar. However, since we did do the EX, I believe we have regen going, and so uh, things are uh, doing pretty well. See, there you go, the 1500 uh, HP regen from the EX finisher. And we're just going to try to finish off by getting either half bar or just kind of wearing it down. Note that because the nature of this boss, they put up a 30 hit shield, we're not really doing any damage at this point. More just kind of waiting out, trying to reestablish, and this is kind of the annoying thing of having t RNG type bosses. Again, if you had used uh, Melissa to start turn one, you could have flash strike stand, blown it out of the water, and on turn two, hopefully your multi hits with the power of Grasta and your DPS such as uh, Iesukia would end it right there and then. But that being said, hey, it's kind of fun to uh, kind of uh, do the long game, show you, show everyone, um, you know, some of the other abilities. Don't forget, she does have that uh, Unburdened Embers that increases uh, crit damage by 45% and make sure you do refresh that every 3 turns. And that really helps support your entire team as well as of course increases the damage of Iesukiya herself. In terms of adversity mode, I don't know if it actually converts back. I don't think it actually fades, so um, that's probably a common question a lot of you have. Uh, so to my knowledge, I don't believe it goes away. You either you know, have it forever or until she... I guess dies. And so the regen is still going from the EX move from the uh, AF finisher. And now let's just end it with a bar since we can. Here we go. I find that AS Claude does really well with um, ES Sukiya because AS Claude not only establishes wind zone, but he has a move that basically boosts um, bow users by 50%, very similar to AS Seal, except that AS Seal is an earth based unit and uh, there's a lot more synergy with Wind and ES Sakia. So, I mean, ES Sakia is really good. She fits in, like I said, multiple teams. Um, either Wind Pierce, she can go Wind Elemental, she can go uh, just Pierce, and she can lead a Pierce team on her own. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. I would um, say that she's definitely very, very powerful. And I was quite surprised after summoning for it and starting to use her, just how... Um, powerful she was in comparison to the existing units I already had on my roster. But that being said, I mean, she still needs other units to kind of help keep her alive and support her to do the maximum damage. So you can see there's some sharing of Grasa from Claude, 
And then finally, Iasakias carrying this pretty standard uh, three types of pain, Grasta. All right, so in conclusion, um, Iasakias is an extremely powerful unit. You can see she can generate hundreds of millions of damage given the right setup. Uh, she can also lead and set up a pierce zone, boost pierce units, and to boot, she has that super AX, uh, EX finisher as an AES unit. Hopefully, some, if not most of you, have had a chance to get her, or if not, hopefully to grind out the treatises and sidegrade her as soon as you can. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.